Mr. Abul Kashif, 68 years old man, gentlemen. He actually basically admitted with our hospitals with the fever, with the four or five days of fever, with some of the cough and chest pain, chloride and chloride of chest pain. Means he admitted with the respiratory infarctus. But I'd like to talk on a very important topic, right? That is called the WBW syndrome, because this gentleman has got this on WBW syndrome. So, what does this WBW syndrome? A very short video clip should be very helpful to remember all them together. So let me start by showing that he's easy, right? That will be fine. So come up here, close to me. Give me a pen. So can you look at here into the ECG? So the most important part is that this is the P waves. This is the P web, right? And this is the PR interval is short. So from the P and R is near about two small square or small square. So it's around 0 0.08, 0 0.08. So normally 0 0.12 to 0 0.1 once again, the two zero PR interval. So this is short PR interval. And having once again an QRS complex, but these are QRS complex is a wide. Normal QRS once again is 0 0.12 in the three small square, but it's more than three small square, one, two, three, narrow three and a half. And having an, once again, an upstroke, you can see this is the upstroke and this is called the delta wave so once again you can look at here having some of the shoulder effects having some of the shoulder effects here having some of the shouldering effects here having some of the shouldering effects here this is one so this is the delta wave so once again short period interval wide curious complex and having once again the delta wave the shouldering i'm saying so this is about the wbw syndrome and very close you can see the in a v wave there is no dominant R wave rather than there is an S wave. I'd like to talk on more further so that you can understand actually what I'm talking about. Right, let's talk on that. So yes, uh, we have seen the ECG, my dear. It's very important. So ECG shows that this is the WPW syndrome. What I'm saying is that you can remember the WPW. Once again, the W, the word will be helpful. W for delta wave, which is the pathognomonic feature that you can remember. So yes, once again, the W for the delta wave. So delta wave means the slurred upstroke of the R wave. So yes, once again, it's the delta wave. So th that we have seen here in the slurred upstroke of the delta wave. So yes, once again, the W for delta wave. And P for the PR means the short PR interval. And third talk is once again, the W means the wide QRS complex. So these three important features for the ECG, that's what known features, starting from once again, the W for delta wave, P for short PR interval and W for the wide QRS complex. So this is the, come close to me, this is the WPW syndrome. So when I say it once again, just remind you once again, it's W for delta wave, P for short PR interval and W for the wide QRS complex. When I listen very carefully, WPW syndrome, why this is happening? Because of an accessory pathway that is present in the gentleman. So having an accessory pathway that leads to the WPW syndrome, typical pictures on ECG. And once again, I'd like to talk about the WW syndrome, the two categories of the WW syndrome, there is the type A and also the type B. So the type A is a left-sided pathway and type B is a right-sided pathway. But my dear, I'm saying is a very important talk. And the type A, I'm saying the left. What does it mean? Just let me write it down so that you can understand better. So come up here. So I say the WPW, so W means the W the word that will be helpful. The delta wave means the delta wave. P for PR interval short and W for wide QRS complex, as we already learned. But one of the important talk that I'd like to say, this WBW syndrome is divided into type A and type B. What I'm saying this type A, I say this is the left-sided pathway. I just changed the spelling of the left so that we can remember the left-sided pathway eh? because this is needed, let's see how this is helpful. And B for bite, or maybe that you can make it out. So this is the right-sided pathway. Eh? So what I'm saying this is very important. So the type is the left, means the left-sided pathway. Eh? Type B is a bite or right-sided pathway. Eh? Having the left-sided pathway, eh, it will give you the right axis deviation. And having the right-sided pathway, eh, it will give the left axis deviation. We'll see on to the ECG once again, we'll go back. So that you can understand. And once again, the type A having the dominant R wave, 
dominant R wave in V1 and type B to differentiate this dominant R wave in V1 will be absent. So this is the differentiating points in building the type and type B. Sometimes it's very confusing. Type A, type B, LED, uh, LED, RED. So once again, this will be helpful. Let me know them very well. Then I can discuss and give you some of the conceptions so that you can idea. So what I'm saying, the WWC will say with me, W for delta wave, P for PR short interval, and W for the white curious complex. And having type A and type B, the left sided pathway, or left sided pathway, right axis deviation, Type B is a bi-sided pathway, right axis, right sided pathway, left axis deviation. And having dominant R in V1 and absent dominant R in V1. Now let me talk once again. Why, why this WBW syndrome happening? As I said, can you give me a paper right here? So that will be helpful. Let's see. So just look at here. This paper will be helpful. Let's get some of the conceptions. So having this is an AV node, my dear. And having an accessory pathway, WBW syndrome. So this is left sided, this is type A, and this is right sided, this is type B. So having an accessory pathway, why and what will be the fate of this WBW syndrome if the patient has? So let me go back once again. We got a PR interval short. If I say the PR interval short, the normal PR interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds, this is normal. If it is less than 0.12, so this is the short PR interval. So if I say the PR interval, what does it really mean? In an ECG, so this is P, this is Q, this is R, this is S, this is T. So P entails the atrial depolarization, and QRS complex is the ventricular depolarization. So what does it mean? The atria to ventricle, PQ and PR, it does mean the atrioventricular conduction time. So I listen very carefully. Once again, so P means the atrial depolarization and QRS is the ventricular activity of ventricular depolarization. Depolarization is the main activity. So you can see other video clips so that you can understand what I'm talking about. So let me start with the, from the impulses passing from the atria to ventricle, the time that we call the AV conduction time. So that does mean A for years once again, the P waves, and once again, the V conduction means once again the ventricular conduction and ventricular activity, the ventricular depolarization means the QRS complex. So PQ, PR, it does mean the AV conduction time. So which is the, one of the important protective phenomena that the atrial impulses filtered onto the AV bundle that goes to the ventricles. So we'll see how it is really helpful and really protective that atrial impulses goes to the ventricle. Now how it is really a protective phenomenon. So I listen very carefully, the 0 0.1 to 0 0.20 second, you know about the physiological delay, so we need it badly, we need it badly. So AV conduction and AV junction is the protective, once again. So we need the 0 0.1 to 0 0.20 second. If somebody has the less than 0 0.1 to, what does it mean? We called it, once again, you come up here, if P, PR interval is getting down, we called it PR excitation means called the pre-excitation. Pre-excitation means the premature excitation of the ventricle. Why this is happening? Let's talk about it. So see the impulses from the IC node, then comes to the, usually the AV node. So if the impulse comes here, in a normal person, feel it, it goes to the AV bundle, AV node, then goes to the AV bundle, then goes to the Purkin fibers. But in a patient with an accessory pathway, so what happened? When the impulse comes to the AV node, they have to wait for the 0.12 second at least. But when it gets a new accessory pathway, so yes, the, you can avail this accessory pathway and the impulse goes to this here. So it's something like that, just look at me. I'm saying sometimes give an examples. If I say you people, right, to have some of the post-graduation study or exam, if I give an accessory pathway rather than the normal pathway, if I say that in a normal path, if you want to pass the step one of any of your post exams, you have to wait for the one year and you have to study a lot before passing the part one or step one, whatever. And if somebody said, if I am saying once again, you have the another accessory pathway, you don't need to wait for one year. Accessory pathway is an abnormal pathway. Accessory pathway is once again the illegal pathways. 
So if you have these accessory party, you yes, at least one or two or maybe the ten percent people will want to avail this accessory party. So let's see. If you avail really the accessory party, what happened? Let's see here. We do Tabishi Bhuvan. So see example. The impasse, this is the heavy note. See you avail the accessory party here. But when this impulse comes here into the ventricle, then it feels that this shouldn't be here. So the ventricle ultimately it, it gives you reverse back to the atrium. So just look at me. So what I'm saying this is very important. As for example, if I'm giving an accessory path, an abnormal and illegal path to pass any of the postgraduate exams of the part one, you may pass, you got a certificate of part one, you passed it. So what happened? After having the six attempts or seven attempts that you fail, fail, fail many, many times, so what will be happening? The authority will give you the certificates, you go back to the once again, to the same position that you are earlier. So it makes an, yes, once again, an abnormal circuit. An abnormal circuit, once again, this circuit is really a dangerous circuit which can stimulate the ventricle, which can stimulate the atrium. And here is also the same thing happening in a WBW having accessory pathway. So whenever you got an accessory pathway, you want to go normal pathway and it needs the 0.12 second. And you got an accessory pathway, so that's why the PR interval getting short. Because you, you get access earlier than that of the normal period, the 0.12 second. So that's why you're getting the PR interval short. When it comes to the ventricle, because this ventricle is pre-excited, so it needs a little bit time. That's why the white QR is complex and having a delta upstroke. Because having, sometimes it happens that you enter here in a short period interval and you get stuck. You get stuck. And this stuck leading to the delta wave first and having a white QR complex in a normal state of a patient. And this delta will give us an idea, this is the WBW syndrome. But once again, this leads to a dangerous complications. What are the complications? Let's see. You get access and normally it passes through and getting a white curious complex in the ventricle is stimulated. But yes, sometimes it happens this re-entrant circuit that we call the atrioventricular re-entrant tachycardia. This re-entrant circuit these two abnormalities that can cause, that is the WBW syndrome, leads to the AVRT and also the atrial fibrillation. This is the atrial tachycardia or atrial arrhythmias in the form of AVRT and also the atrial fibrillation. And the danger is this can stimulate the ventricles and leads to the ventricular fibrillations as well. So this is the danger. So let me stop once again. So WBW syndrome, yes, as I said that it produces the re-entrant tachycardia, so that leads to, yes, the supraventricular tachycardia in the form of AVRT, and also the atrial fibrillation, that is the, yes, a variety of supraventricular tachycardia. And it can also degenerate to form the ventricular fibrillation, means the cardiac arrest and also the death. Yes, my dear doctor, I'd like to talk. If you have in some of the illegal and accessory pathway, so you'll have a chance of the cardiac arrest and also the death. As I said, Yes, so we shouldn't avail the illegal and accessory pathway. We should always have pass for the normal and also the normal trance of the paper. So yes, and having an accessory pathway will give you the answer of the WBW syndrome and having the ECG pictures of WBW syndrome. As I say, the W for delta wave, P for PR short, and last talk is once again, the W for white QRS complex. And the type and type B is differentiating features. So the type and type B, the type A, once again, the left-sided pathway, means the left-sided pathway. Type B is the bi-sided pathway, means the right-sided pathway. Left-sided pathway gives you the right axis deviation. In contrast, the right-sided pathway gives you the left axis deviation. And also another differentiating point in the left-sided pathway will have the dominant RF in V1. In contrast, the right-sided pathway, no dominant RF in V1. One of the important talk. Usually what happens in a disease, having a type A and type B, or maybe the primary and secondary, might I listen very carefully that WBW syndrome means WBW type B rather than type A. It does mean WBW syndrome type B is more common than that of the type A. 
So let's talk about the type B, what does it mean? The bisected pathway, right sided pathway, left axis deviation and no dominant ROV in V1. So just follow with me and once again talk with me. Means that WBWC with the type B is more common. So that we will always look for the type B in the ECG. We'll see now. And once again, the type B means the bisected pathway, right sided pathway, left axis deviation and no dominant ROV in V1. So let's see here in an ECG. So yes, Martin. This one? No, next one. This one, right. So you see, this is the lead one. You see the a big R wave, and this is the lead tree. There is a negative R wave, means the S wave. So yes, the lead one, lead two, and lead three. Just look at me. Look at me. So lead one in my hands, left hand lead to in the middle and lead to in my right hand. So if the lead one is getting up, so the left axis deviation. And lead to is getting down, once again, the left axis deviation. If it gets up, just, just opposite. The, the things that the lead to is getting up and the lead one getting negative. So once again, the right axis deviation, as I said, the WBW syndrome, the type B, is a more common. So type B means the right sided pathway. Left axis deviation, so we got the answer. Yes, this is the left axis deviation. So this is WPW type B. And another important point, we say that the light sided path with no dominant ROF in V1. So let's see. In a V1, you see the absent dominant ROF. So no dominant ROF is the only S wave. No ROF at all. So once again, this is WPW type B. Got it? So yes, the ECG pictures of WPW syndrome, the type B and type B, differentiating them is really important. And also having knowing them, what are the complications of the WW syndrome is really important. So I'll talk on the, the management of WW syndrome, having some of the complications, the ADRT, and some of the pitfalls in the management is really important. I'll talk in another video clips. So I think you enjoyed. So the summary talk once again, the WPW syndrome once again, W for delta wave, P for PR short, and W for the wide QRS complex. And having differentiating features of A and B, once again, the A for type A, B for type B, Yes, once again, A for left sided pathway and B for right sided, right -sided pathway. And left sided pathway, right axis deviation, dominant R wave in V1. And type B, once again, the right sided pathway, right axis deviation, no dominant R wave in V1. As we have seen, the WW type B is more common than the type A. And one of the important complications of WPW syndrome, there is the supraventricular tachycardia in the form of AVRT and atrial fibrillation. And once again, the next is the ventricular fibrillation and the death. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy. Thank you. Shikla Yes.